Hello and welcome to Biz Daily. I'm John Jordan. So the big news today really is big news. In a kind of shock announcement, uh, Activision Blizzard, the big PC console uh, publisher, has announced that it's in the process of buying, but effectively has bought King, the uh, developer of games like Candy Crush Saga, for $5.9 billion. So there'd be lots of kind of speculation, lots of opinion from various people about whether this is a good deal and all this kind of yada yada yada. I guess what we can say is um, the two companies are um, could be seen as complementary. So uh, Activision and Blizzard are focused very much on PC and console games. Um, they're very much focused on what we could say are kind of hardcore games um, or games that will appeal to a kind of a teenage, 20, 30 year old male audience and also very focused on premium games, so paid games, um, console games obviously tend, tend to buy them up front um, and obviously World of Warcraft is a subscription game. So what um, Activision Blizzard doesn't have a lot of is mobile, it's been singularly um, disastrous really about trying to, trying to have a good stab at making mobile games, it hasn't really got anywhere at all, I mean you could argue it hasn't really, hasn't, hasn't really spent a lot of money or put a lot of resources into making mobile games a success. The one kind of kind of uh, mobile game or partly mobile game that has been very successful for it is, um, is he, um, Hearthstone from uh, Blizzard, but that's c um, kind of a PC game that came to mobile or, or um, not a, a pure play mobile game, but I think they've, um, Blizzard were quite surprised about how well that game has done, um, originally first launched on um, on uh, iPad and since come to iPhone as well. Um, so they've been kind of surprised by that and, and that's perhaps, has, I mean, they shouldn't have really uh, have needed to any enthusiasm or any kind of extra knowledge to know they need to get into mobile games. Um, but that seems to be something that they've kind of looked at internally because they've got their own numbers on, on a game that's been doing pretty well for them. Um, so uh, compared to that, King is, um, pretty much pure play mobile, has a bit of Facebook but, but mainly mobile, is all free to play so, th so no paid games at all um, and is gender balance is a bit more focused on female um, games, uh, female kind of players, which probably about 50-50, maybe 60-40 maybe um, in, in terms of uh, in favour of, of female players. Um, but one thing King has been proven very good at is is doing franchises. Obviously um, Candy Crush Saga is its big game, it's kind of done versions of that Candy Crush Soda saga, it's done the various kind of different saga stories, Bubble Witch and things like that. And, and uh, while, while Candy Crush is by far away its the kind of biggest franchise so um, that kind of reckon now to be to have generated kind of two, three, four billion dollars in, in revenue during during its time. Um, the kind of one um, thing that everyone's pointing out, um, because it's kind of part of, of, of King's Financials, is that Candy Crush has been massive um, and is now in, in a relative decline, so it's a mature product. So that's been partly the issue that people have been saying, oh, has, has um, Activision Blizzard pay, paid too much? So $6 billion, that seems like a lot of money, and of course it is a lot of money, but obviously with all these things, um, depends what you're buying. Um, so uh, both those companies are floated on the stock exchange, so that makes, the, in a sense, that makes the valuation process quite easy. So uh, Activision Blizzard has paid around about 20% um, premium in terms of um, the share price of King before the deal. Obviously, shares go up and down, um, but around 20%. So they're paying $18 um, per King share. And um, so, in terms of kind of kind of purely on a on a day-to-day -day basis, has it overpaid? Well, it's overpaid by 20%. Um, if you really want to dig into it, there are some kind of financial um, kind of intricacies. Um, so King has a certain amount of cash which you could kind of take off off the off the value. So that's about eight hundred million dollars of cash. Um, there's also an issue that um, Blizzard, uh, Activision Blizzard, has a whole bunch of cash. Don't quite know how much, but um, the, the deal is actually all cash, and it's paying about three point two billion dollars of its own cash, and it's taking a bit of a, um, a loan from a bank to pay the rest off. But um, Blizzard. Activision Blizzard will have a whole bunch of cash that it will have outside the US and um, in terms of uh, kind of not just US accounting laws but for any company if you're bringing cash in from outside you pay tax on that so there may be a slightly um, kind of tax efficient way of, of doing the deal so, so Activision Blizzard may not be paying the whole kind of 5.9 billion dollars it may be on accounting accounting kind of a um, method account is paying slightly less I mean that's kind of a bit by the by so I guess the thing kind of everyone's really looking at it is um, there's an obvious thing, there's a, this kind of complementary um, 
situation where these where these two companies um, they're not competing in any way. So um, so Activision Blizzard has just gained really big market share in the mobile games market. Um, and, it, and even if, if King isn't quite as strong as it once was, it's still one of the strongest uh, mobile games companies and 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 has a good global reach as well. So Candy Crush has been pretty much a hit across the, uh, you know, around the world in in, in China and, and Korea um, and Japan. It's done pretty well in all those in all those territories, um, so that's a, a good a, you know a, a good platform. Um, Factory Blizzard, quite whether um, you know quite whether we expect you know, King to be making Call of Duty games on mobile. Um, you could argue that while it's very good at free to play and monetization and engagement and games as a service, it's proven that um, it probably doesn't have um, it just has never in its history made made those kind of core games. Um, King has always been about very kind of casual um, social experiences. Um, saying that, it has um, over, the, over time kind of acquired some studios that are a bit more kind of hardcore. So, um, so, so maybe it's kind of gaining expertise. But you kind of imagine, in, in, in the short term at least, we won't be expecting um, Call of Duty Saga to, to be appearing on on, on on any app stores. Um, so I guess it be, it becomes more um, for the the deal in the, in the in the medium term and long term. How, how do those two companies? How do the, the, the synergies work? Of course, that's impossible for us to tell at the moment because it's the medium term and long term, which we don't have the crystal ball to be able to tell that. Um, but it seems at the moment um, most people seem um, to suggest the deal is fairly positive. Um, and I guess the, the the biggest impact really is how it shakes up. Um, the wider game space. So it's always been interesting. So there's been some companies who have um, a very strong in say console PC, um, and some very strong in mobile. Um, not that many companies that are strong across the board. Um, and so with this deal, um, Activision, I guess we call them Activision Blizzard King, um, a bit cumbersome, but they are now the actually the second biggest uh, games company in the world. Um, the, the biggest pure games company in the world, but the biggest games, the b biggest kind of games company in the world is Tencent that has a lot of other parts to it to its own business but its games revenue is bigger than than Activision Blizzard Kings but Tencent is a very odd beast it's um, very, obviously uh, very Chinese focused um, in the West now Activision Blizzard uh, King is now the kind of the, the, the biggest games company um, so even compared to yeah, EA has very strong in console PC it's, its mobile side is still very small um, so uh, on that level, I mean, I guess you have some of the Japanese companies, Square Enix, um, again, kind of quite strong on console. Um, mobile has a bit, not very much. Um, Sega, kind of similar, uh, strong on mobile, but only in Japan. So, so it's quite a good play, um, whether you see it as defensive or, or offensive in the long term for Activision Blizzard. Um, and they have said that King will effectively operate um, as Blizzard does uh, when Activision bought Blizzard. It effectively work, work as a, as a independent business unit, it will kind of run itself, obviously there'll be synergies and, and all that kind of stuff, but the, the CEO will remain in place and the management team will remain in place, so um, certainly a, a really surprise um, uh, kind of news story today, um, very interesting to, to kind of speculate on what will happen, we don't really know, but um, certainly it will give us lots of food for thought in the coming days. Come back tomorrow, we can't promise a story as big as that one, but I'm sure there will be something going on in the world of mobile gaming, because there always is. See you then.